White stick switching is probably one of the biggest skill gaps in FIFA 22, something that a lot of players do struggle with. A few days ago, we did go ahead and release our defending video, but we did say that we'd go ahead and explain right stick switching in more detail to hopefully help you get to an understanding of it a little bit quicker, how you can actually apply the methods and practice them in game. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So first of all, we need to go ahead and understand actually what is right stick switching. Some of you may already be familiar with this. So if you are, there are timestamps at the bottom of the video where you can jump into the specific chapters to go ahead and help you out. Right stick switching is where you change player when defending with your right analog stick. Traditionally on FIFA, you would use the LB button, the L1 button, your left bumper button. And what this will do is it will change you theoretically to the person that's closest to the ball. But you may not always want that. You may want to switch to someone to track a run, for example, or apply pressure somewhere else rather than the guy on the ball. When you look into your game settings, you will see the different type of switches that are available. So some people have it on auto. This is where you don't press anything to change and the game will change player for you when you're defending. You do not want this on at all to so take that off you then have the choice of switching so that it automatically switches on air balls and loose balls so if someone crosses it in the game will automatically change to the defender that's going to be there to head the ball away and when there's a loose ball so say if you're controlling your right mid the ball just bounces out into the middle of the park you will have it automatically changed for you personally i have mine just on air balls but i would recommend air balls and loose balls for most players you can then go in manual where everything is used. So if the player crosses it in, you need to manually switch, which is a little bit harder and a little bit tougher. So that's how the settings are explained. You do also then have a choice of player relative or ball relative. Player relative, this will make sense in a minute when we go further into this. Player relative is where when you flick the right stick, whoever you're controlling is the center of that flick of where you go. Ball relative means that the ball is where you would f is the so is the focal point is the one in the middle and this will make sense in a second when we go over the kind of clock analogy for you. I personally play player relative because that's what the default has been on years. There is no better one. It's personal preference. Player relative in some argue can be harder because the player moves while as the ball is always you know center. It, it, it might be easier to track. You know then where the ball is rather than where the player is. So you choose which one you like. I've tried ball relative. It's not for me. Player relative makes more sense. Let's go ahead though and talk and break down some clips on how to effectively right stick switch. One thing I forgot to mention which has a part in it i suppose is there's something called auto switch move assistance when you change to a player you can have it on high low or non this is basically the game will already be on a path so say if you say if you switch from your center mid to your center back that center back may already be running in one direction right if you have it on high you won't have control of that player for the next half a second like the game will still be on its predetermined path if you have it on low it's a bit quicker if you have it on non you instantly have control of that player if you find that when you play a switch, it takes a long time for your players to turn and readjust their angle, change it to low. If you're like me and prefer to have control of your players straight away, have it on non. However, do be mindful that if you do this, if you play a switch and you are accidentally on a player that you didn't want to be on, whatever input you're doing with your left stick will immediately take over, which can lead to dragging players out of position. Just thought I'd mention that because it's sort of relevant in a way. Back to the video. So to learn how to right stick switch, we need to first of all understand the principles to actually apply it into your game. Right stick switching is, as I said, something that requires a lot of skill and a lot of practice to go ahead and get right. So I'm going to walk you through these examples for you now. Why is right stick switching good? As you can see, I'm with the Alexander Arnold at the minute. The ball is about to get played down on the wing, so I use the right stick to go ahead and switch from Arnold over to there. Let's talk about point number one as the easiest kind of principle. Let me freeze it at the point of where I was with Arnold. So hopefully this will make nice and easy sense for you. Once you grasp this idea, it then just comes down to practice and kind of getting used to it. So I am with Arnold right now, right? You can see that that is where I am controlling. Remember, this is on player relative, by the way. If I want to change to Van Dyke, who's on this far right of your screen, you need to think about it like this. And if you've been watching me for a while, you probably already know what's coming. 
basically your right analog stick which is here in the top right is the center of a clock and that player is the center of the clock so if you look at arnold now if i wanted to change to van dyke well the center of the clock where would i push the right analog stick well van dyke is just over at three o'clock so i'm going to push it that way if you wanted to change let's say to this man here where would you go you push the right analog stick that way where it becomes tricky and more difficult is if you wanted to change to Kante. Kante is down in that direction. What you have to remember about this is that these players are very close to each other and the right analog stick is very minuscule, right? It, it's not big. So if I was going to flick down into here to try and go to Kante, the difference between flicking there and flicking there on your analog stick is tiny. The right analog stick isn't massive. So it actually makes it really difficult to get this. Point number two is that if you know this and you know that this may change to that man instead, well, all you got to do is a double flick of the right stick. So you have to flick it that way again and you will get to Kante. Where people get lost is that they don't always get to their designated man and they end up just flicking the right stick in loads of different directions and end up getting into trouble. So as you can see there, I flicked the right stick that way nice and quick and efficient and that is why right stick switching is so good when you make a mistake with right stick switching point number three is you can rectify it by using the lb button the l1 button the l1 button as a general rule of thumb will change you to the man that is closest to the ball and this means the guy that's closest to the ball that's goal side not the other side and what do we mean by goal side if the ball is here so let's say it's there and we have these players there they're all goal side of the ball right if I had, a, say, a centre mid here, he's not goal side of the ball, so it's not going to change you to him as a general rule of thumb. So as you can see in this sort of example here, because this is the thing with right stick switching, we want to use it, we have to get it into our game. You still need to use LB, L1. LB and L1 certainly has a time and a place. So let me just screenshot this here for you. So the ball gets played down the wing. I was controlling one of these men in the middle there. I needed to change to Arnold. Arnold, I know, is the closest man to the ball with no one else around. So I just tap the LB button. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Use the LB button, the L1 button on PlayStation, and that will change you to that nice and simple and then gives you the ability to defend that area. So I'm just going to slow this down just so you can see how I'm defending and how I'm using the right stick to change in between players and how to put that pressure on the opponent from doing so. Switching over to the Chilwell and then going back to the Chilwell because I went to Rudiger briefly there, using the right stick just to cover the cross if that's what he went for and then changing back to him with that LB button. Having this ability to almost manipulate and put your defenders where you want because you can move with the right stick and change player, adjust their angle, press LB, go back to the man closest with the ball. Right stick switch, cover the next pass, then go back to the man close enough to the ball. It makes it so efficient and so easy. Now, if you get it wrong and you end up controlling a man that's miles away and not who you wanted to, please do just press that LB button, get back to the closest man with the ball. If you've conceded a corner and the opponent's going to come in and it's really tight and intricate, as a general rule there, it can be better to use the LB, the L1 button because there's so many people in a crowded area. You can just see there how we switch to that on Yenka. On Yenka then closes that angle down. And this is the great thing about right stick switching is that it allows you to have a high pressing game. You can't press with just the LB because it won't change you to the man that's you know further away, further away from the ball. When you use the right stick, you get to say, I want to go to this man here. So I end up changing to the Rashford here in this example. And then what do I do? I press uh, the right analog stick, flick it up that way and change to that man. And that way I can now press the ball holder and go ahead and do that. And that's the beauty of it. Let's say you're out on the wing and you want to be able to cover the wing ball but apply pressure in the middle. You can use a second man press. Watch the defending video from a few days ago and that will make you understand that. So you can just do that and it makes it so efficient and so easy for you. But like even there, look at that. So we'll have a look at this one more time and I'll slow it down for you to hopefully make it nice and easy. Ball comes out on the wing. We're defending with Arnold. We're trying to see if we can get the ball. Nothing comes from it. He turns back. So we right stick switch. We end up changing to Kante. I'll put Kante into there. On Yenka then puts that little bit of pressure on. I thought he might go into the middle. So I've already switched to Kante getting ready for that. He chose not to go for it. 
I press the LB to go back to that man and defend that. And then again, Van Dyke coming over and putting that pressure on. How do you actually practice all this is the big question. For me, the best way to learn is to go into a kickoff match, use your normal formation, and just get used to right six switching. If you're in division rivals and you're happy maybe not winning every game, say to yourself, I'm only going to right six switch this game and just get comfortable with it. One of the things that you have to take into account is that if you constantly change formations, you don't get used to the habits of right six switching, the patterns, because it's just, you know, the same formation will have the roughly the same switches. If I want to change from my right attack in mid to my right DM in the 4 2 3 1, that's the same pattern. The more you play with that formation, the more it will help you. All right. So I hope that's all made sense for you. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Drop them down below in the comment section and I will get back to you on there. Thank you all very much for watching. I do appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Bye bye.